Hey Blog Watchers, Steve Petrusky here with the Lander team and the Heritage Group and I'm here with Don Summers with Arizona Summers Heating and Cooling and he's going to be answering some questions for us that you asked us on Facebook. But before we do that, I do want to point out a couple things here on our website. If you are looking to purchase a home, click this button here and one of our agents will reach out. And if you are looking to possibly upgrade or downsize your home this year or looking to sell, Click this button here and one of our agents will reach out and give you a free home evaluation. Hey everyone, Don with Arizona Summers Cooling and Heating. It's a pleasure to be here today answering some questions and working with Steve and the Lander team. Our first question that we have today is, having an old system, is a new system better or new energy efficient windows? And can you only, and you can only pick one? Fantastic question. Um, if your unit's over 10 years old and older, most likely it's a 10 seer or worse as far as efficiency goes. And I can tell you that by replacing it with even a general 14 seer system, going from a 10 seer to a 14, you're going to be saving about 29% off your utilities um, per the energy efficiency guidelines. As far as windows go, I could not tell you the pricing on windows nowadays, but I do know that you can at least do window treatment, whether it's solar screens, uh, tinting, anything of that nature to help increase the efficiency of your windows themselves. When it comes to an old air conditioner, quite frankly, there's nothing you can do to increase the efficiency besides replace it. And our next question is, why does my heater hiss when it kicks off? Well, it sounds like you may have a heat pump system, and basically when they shut off, the refrigerant pressures equalize from the high side to the low side, resulting in a hiss or almost like a noise from water seemingly, and that's perfectly normal, part of normal operations and nothing to be alarmed of at this point in time. And our next question, what's the best home automation system to control my AC? Fantastic question. There are a bunch of different home automation systems out on the market nowadays, each one with their own pros and cons. I personally prefer Honeywell and the Honeywell brand of products. They're very user friendly for both the installation crew and the homeowner. So Honeywell would definitely be our number one choice when it comes to home automation systems. And our next question is Wi-Fi thermostats, are they worth it? And are the Wi-Fi Honeywell thermostats worth the money? Really depends on the individual in the home. For people who like having the control and monitoring their equipment from afar, there's nothing better than a Wi-Fi thermostat to adjust your heating and cooling for proper temps when you're on your way home and to monitor the temperature in the home when you're out of state, out of town. Fantastic idea for rentals and for people with vacation homes that want to keep an eye on the conditions inside their home when they're gone. Honeywell definitely, um, I would say, is our, our go-to when it comes to Wi-Fi thermostats. Again, the app is very user-friendly and easy to operate um, when controlling the heating and cooling system through your smartphone. Is it better, more cost-effective, leave your thermostat at one temperature all the time or because I work all day to just turn it up or down when I get home? That's a question that can be debated time and time again. Each individual person may have their own preference. I found that it's better to leave the thermostat at one consistent temperature based on the fact of, let's say it's a hot summer day, you leave it at 75 degrees when you're home and you turn it up to 85 degrees when you're gone. But when you come home and turn it down to 75, not only are you paying to cool the air in the home, you're also paying to transfer the heat out of everything in the house that absorbed that temperature. Whether it be the furniture, the couch, the table, everything in the home is 85 degrees and we need to make it 75. So you're gonna have longer run times and you're gonna cause a lot of strain on the equipment. At the end of the day, slow and steady is always best. And our next question, what's my split? That's a fantastic question. By split, I'm assuming it's temperature split in relation to the cooling performance, if you will, of your cooling system. By general, 18 to 22 degrees is normal. However, if the temperature split is too high, you could have poor airflow due to an indoor coil that's dirty or a dirty air filter. The scientific way is to use the system's return temperature and judge both the return wet bulb, return dry bulb, 
and compare it to our chart to see exactly what the specifications should be for that point in time for that current system. The difference between a heat pump and central heat. It's a fantastic question. A uh, heat pump is basically an air conditioner with a reversing valve that reverses our refrigerant flow. So in turn, we're absorbing heat from the outside and transferring it to inside the home. Now a gas heat is completely different. You're dealing with either natural gas or propane. You've got a gas valve, gas burners, flame sensor. It's a whole other animal of its own. Um, both are great sources of heat and really depends on your location and the environment that you're in when it comes to gas or heat pump. Split systems, best one. Uh, that's a fantastic question. We always recommend Amana as our number one. They're the only manufacturer on the market that offer a lifetime compressor warranty with their new equipment. Anything that's warrantied for a lifetime, you know the company's got to manufacture it to the best of their ability and stand behind that equipment. So again, lifetime warranty on the compressor really speaks for itself. Our next question, uh, what are my finance options for a new system? Uh, it's a great question. We work with a company called Green Sky who deals with financing for the construction industry as a whole. We also deal locally with One Main Financial, a lot of good guys down there and willing to help out the, company, or the customers any way they can. And note there are also other options available when it comes to your local bank and establishments like that. Uh, next question, is it more efficient to close doors and vents in unused rooms? Really, probably the number one question I get dealing with people every day and going into their homes. Um, at the end of the day, your system was sized appropriately for your house. Uh, it, my personal and professional opinion, your interior doors should be open, your vents should be open for proper circulation throughout the home and consistent temperatures and comfort throughout the home as well. Uh, what kind of maintenance is actually necessary? Fantastic question. Uh, Two-part answer here. Uh, first of all, when it comes to maintenance, it really depends on the type of equipment you have. Like we talked about earlier, a heat pump system has all the same working components as the air conditioner. So you really couldn't go with just once a year on that type of system and making sure everything's working as it should. Now, a gas system is completely different than your central AC. So you're always best getting the gas heating checked out and making sure everything's good to go for the winter, usually in the fall time. And then same thing in the spring, go through the AC and make sure everything's gonna be ready to go for the summer so you don't have any unexpected issues. Um, what symptoms should we be looking for to spot a problem? Really as a homeowner, a couple things, uh, high electric usage increase, high gas increase, if it's during the, the winter and you do have a gas heater. Um, I will say that over half of the problems we come across in the summer that are deemed emergency breakdowns really could have been addressed in the spring on a routine maintenance to at least let the customer know, hey, there's a problem here and it's something to keep in mind and at least budget for the repairs if needed rather than wait until it's a dire emergency on a night or a weekend, especially July or August. Our next question, is it better to have one powerful system or two separate systems in a large single story home? Really depends on the design of the home. Um, as long as the equipment's designed properly for the, the, the home and the space is the most important thing. In my opinion, if you had two smaller units compared to one larger unit, you could get by if one of those were to fail um, in the heat of the summer and at least get you through. However, long term, you're going to be paying twice as much in maintenance, twice as much in repairs, and twice as much in replacement to take care of those two systems over the lifetime of your home ownership compared to just literally looking after one, one larger unit. If your home's too large and it needs to, well, that's okay and that's just how it's supposed to be. Really, it goes back to the design of the home and how everything was sized. And that's it. Thank you everyone for uh, your time and patience and hope that we were able to share some knowledge and help everyone out. Have a great day. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, it was a fantastic opportunity to be able to answer some questions that people have throughout the community. It really does mean a lot to be able to help. Um, please call in any other questions that weren't ans answered today. We'd love to take the time and um, at least answer those for you. 
and result of the video, we have a special going on right now. Call in 928-692-4447. Mention the Heritage Group or the Lander Team, and you'll have $25 off of your seasonal check for your air conditioning system. Again, thank you, and I hope everyone has a great day.